Coming to you from the heart of Midland, this is the October 2014 edition of MPS Today. My name is Scott Cochran, MPS Curriculum Specialist for Auxiliary Education and host of the show. We begin the school year by checking out what's happening at the high schools. We'll hear from the DECA Club at Dow High School and from the Midland High School Amateur Radio Club. Uh, in between, the counselors will give you the latest news and notes for students and their families, the information that they need to know. You can catch all of our programming on Charter Cable Channel 190 or UVerse Channel 99, but you're probably watching us on our YouTube site. Go to www.midlandps.org and click on the YouTube button in the upper right-hand corner. Now, our first guests today are students from Dow High School from the DECA Club. So join me in welcoming Audrey Molinar and Varun Shanker. Audrey and Varun, welcome to the show. Thank, Thank you. you. You bet. Now, tell us a little bit about yourselves. How's the school year going so far? It's going great. Um, I'm in my senior year, so it's okay. a lot of fun. Um, have a lot of hard classes, but yeah. it's going well. What kind of classes are you taking this year? Um, I'm taking a couple business classes, an accounting class, calculus, physics, a lot. That sounds like that keeps you busy studying when you <laughs> yes, come home it does. from school. So, all right. And uh, what do you like to do when you're not uh, in school or studying? Um, when I'm not at school, I play tennis. I'm in okay. our school's DECA club. I'm also a part of the National Honor Society at school and student government. All right. Now, so you're playing tennis for the school right now then? Um, it actually starts in the spring. Oh, the girls' teams in the yes. spring. And, the, and are the boys in the spring as well? The boys are in the fall. Boys in the fall. So, all right. So you got tennis going on. That's later. Yes. I don't know how you find the time to do all those things. <laughs> yeah. Varun, how about you? Now, are you playing tennis for the school team I as am. well? I am. I'm playing for Endow's varsity team and... I'm a sophomore this year. Okay. And like Audrey, I'm in the DECA club, as you know. And of course. Um, just, I'm enjoying school this year. It's a great year, and Dow High School is very interesting. Yeah, it's a good place to be, no doubt about it. So, uh, what do you, what are the, what do the two of you enjoy the most about being at Dow High School? Um, we have a lot of great teachers at our school. We're very blessed to um, get to see those teachers every day. We also um, have all of our friends there, and we yeah. have very good classes. So okay. that's really good. Good. All right, well, let's talk about DECA a little bit. Uh, what does DECA do? So DECA is basically a business club that prepares uh, young students, young entrepreneurs, to be emerging leaders in business and in d different fields for the future. Okay. So the basic principle of DECA is we have a competition and in that competition students are allowed to choose the field that they want to go in so for example we have sports and entertainment marketing apparel and accessories food marketing quick serve restaurant so as you can know that the the topics span the gamut and there's really a variety of topics that students can choose to participate in and when you go to a competition you pr present a judge a case study so they give you a situation and okay students are asked to respond to the situation in the best possible manner. So what might be an example of one of those case studies? Um, for example, in one of the case studies last year, I was in sports and entertainment marketing. Okay. So um, they would ask you, what's the best way for us to market a concert or a football game coming up? So then you would have to come up with um, the best way to market that but to make a profit. And um, there's also something called performance indicators. And these are um, questions that you need to add in and things that you need to address during your role play. OK. So what would be an example of some of the performance indicators? Do you um, remember? Yeah, I would All say, right. like, explain the nature of marketing um, in a business or mm -hmm. something like that. So, it's not, so you're, you're focused on a specific role play, but then you're also supposed to add in other information about Correct. the more general topic yes. as well. So yes. So if, if someone were to ask a, a lay person like myself about how would you market a football game or a concert, I would say, uh, you know, put an ad on TV and on the radio. Mm -hmm. So what would you say now, because you're the experts, what would you guys say? Well, uh, first off, you obviously want to address the performance indicators, but you would look to see, okay, what is the target market? Uh, okay. what, what is the uh, demographic of the people that are attending this event? And you look to gear the answer more towards the target market and the city and the general community. Okay, so you're bringing lots of factors, not just the, the age and occupation or, or lifestyle of the folks that you're trying to target, but also where they live and yes. other activities they might be involved in. Do you look for cross-marketing opportunities too then? Is that part of the whole situation? Yes, of yes. course. All right. Yep. Well, that sounds interesting. So it, it, you it would prepare a presentation for the judges about this case study. You include other performance indicators, and then what happens after that? 
Uh, um, students take a test before they go to the competition, and a student's uh, success is determined, the result is determined by the sum of the score of the test and the case study. So after you take the test, then once you're compared to the rest of the people in your group, then it's pretty easy to determine who moves on to the next level of competition. Mm -hmm. Now, I would guess a lot of folks watching are familiar with the, the sports model of competitions that we have, that, where people have a conference competition, then they'll have districts or regionals or states. And if you're successful, you keep moving on. Yes. So what's the model for DECA, for the series of competitions? Um, first, we have di districts. And then um, those are typically the people in our area. And then we have um, states this year. Those will be in Grand Rapids. And then moving on from that is internationals. And those are in Orlando, Florida this year. So right. really excited. And it seems like I've heard that the, the Dow High School Decca Club does very well at these competitions. Yes. So what are some recent results? Um, last year we brought a big group to internationals and so um, that was really exciting to have that many kids from mm -hmm. Dalgo and um, we had 52 students compete in districts and we brought 49 to states so that oh. was also very successful. It's a very high success yes. rate. And what would you say the typical, because it's not just about the competition while you're in high school obviously, you're trying to prepare for what comes next. Mm -hmm. So what would you say the typical student gains from being a part of the club? There are many things that this uh, typical student gains. As you can see, we have 52 members. It's a very popular uh, club, and each year the population of this club is expanding. Uh, students gain uh, presenting skills. Um, in general, their thoughts are able to be more articulate, and there's a wide variety of skills that they're able to refine over the years, presenting, uh, thinking, critical thinking skills, mm -hmm. and just overall uh, uh, articulation of their thoughts. Mm -hmm. Sure. All right. Anything to add to that? Um, I know that I've definitely learned a lot from DECA. I've become a much better um, speaker and, like Varun said, um, critical thinking. So it's helped me a lot in all my classes, and I know that it'll um, prepare me for my career later on. Sure, because if you're presented with a case study, you have to be able to break it down into its pieces, right? Yes. And figure out what's the best way to address each part. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to be able to think on your feet. I mean, how much time do you have? from the time you receive a case study to the time you're presenting in front of a job, judge, typically? Um, there's either individual or partnerships. And so um, the individual competitors, they get 10 minutes to prepare um, their presentation for the judge. Okay. And then um, the people who are in a partnership, they get 30 minutes to prepare for the judge. Wow, it's not a lot of time. No, it goes now, by really quick. I bet it does. For the two of you, have you done individual uh, competitions or a partnership, and what have you found the value for either or both of those? Uh, last year I did an individual event, so definitely a lot more time, uh, a lot less time to, to think. So a lot of spontaneous thinking and able to think on your feet. Mm -hmm. Um, I was in a partnership last year, and so it really taught me a lot about um, working with another person and sure. feeding off of each other um, to come up with new ideas, and so that was a really great experience. And are you doing a partnership one this year as well, or are you doing an individual event? Um, I think I'll do an individual event this year just for a different aspect of DECA. Sure. Yeah, I mean, you have to be able to do both those things in the real world these yeah. days, right? But you, you have to be able to come up with your own ideas, but you have to be able to collaborate as mm -hmm. well, don't you? So that's awesome. Uh, it, last question, it sounds like DECA does a really nice job of preparing you for life after high school. So you're a senior, you're a 10th grader, you have a little more time to think about yeah. it, room, but <laughs> what are your plans? Have you thought about what's up for you guys after you're done with high school? Um, I definitely want to go to college. I'm applying okay. right now. Um, I think that I want to go in-state, so probably either Michigan State or University of Michigan. And um, I think I want to go into some area of business because of what DECA's taught me, but I'm not sure what that area will be yet. Sure. Okay. And for you? Um, I uh, plan on studying sciences, but also incorporating the business aspect because I really enjoy, the, I enjoy business a lot. So somehow sure. combining science and business in a field would really suit me, I feel. Yeah, you know what's interesting is that in order to be successful in the world today, you know, you can't just be a, a specialist in one very specific area, right? You have to be able to communicate with others. Mm -hmm. So no matter whether you're in business or medicine or somewhere in the sciences, I mean, you can be an expert in an area, but you have to be able to connect with people and uh, build relationships and, and get people involved in what you're doing. And it sounds like you're both well on your way to doing that. 
Thank you. All right. Well, thanks for telling us about DECA Club, and good luck at Dow High this year, and good luck with everything you have in your futures. Thank, Thank you. you very much. You bet. What a great example of a program that helps students become college and career ready in so many different ways. Uh, later, we'll learn about another exciting club, the Midland High School Amateur Radio Club. But up next, we have counselors Craig Hawkins and Jill English here to bring us the latest news and notes from the Counselor's Corner. So stick around for more MPS Today right after this. Don't worry, the 74 people were picked before me in the NFL draft. To fight childhood obesity, United Way and the NFL are helping kids play at least 60 minutes a day. Okay, time for the team obstacle course. Yay! What this place needs is more healthy kids. To get involved or donate, go to unitedway.org slash play60. Now I get it. Welcome to Counselor's Corner. My name is Craig Hawkins. I'm a counselor at Midland High School, and this is Jill English, counselor at Dow High School. We're here today to talk about some of the important things that are happening in the month of October. One of the main things is for seniors to get their college applications out. This is really a three-step process. First, we ask students to go onto the college website and look at the application, complete it, submit it, also submit their payment for that application. Some colleges require a payment, some don't but students need to make sure if the college does require a payment for that application that they do that. Then they need to go on a program called Parchment. Last year when they were juniors, we got all the juniors in the, in the computer lab and we showed them how to get on Parchment, set up an account so that as seniors they can then submit their uh, request to send a transcript to each one of the colleges they've applied to. And the last step is to make sure that they have their ACT scores sent to those individual colleges. Now sometimes they sent them when they actually signed up for the ACT. There were four colleges that they could request the scores automatically be sent to. But they may have additional schools that they want to send those scores to. There they need to go on actstudent.org and request to have those ACT scores sent to those individual schools. After they finish that three-step process, they will establish an application or admissions file with that individual college and then their applications will be reviewed and they'll have to wait uh, it varies from college to college on when they hear whether they've been admitted or not now if your student has a problem or has uh, some concern with that make sure they come and see their counselor so that we can help them through that process another important thing that happens in the month of october is the psat test that is the practice sat and that's a great time to go in take a standardized test and sit in a large area where it is timed and you really get an idea of what it's like to take these college entrance tests. And again, that's a practice SAT. And that is done at the high schools on a Wednesday, actually October 15th at both Dow High and Midland High, we're gonna be offering that to students. It's in the morning and students need to register for that test. Now, we're doing that a little differently this year where they're gonna be registering online and they'll make their payment online. And we'll be informing students uh, in the October, in the month of October, how to go about doing that to make sure that everybody gets registered that wants to take that test. So that's kind of a couple of important things that students need to do in the month of October. One of the great features that is available to both students and parents is um, online and it's called Home Access Center. If you're not familiar with Home Access Center, it is an online feature for students and parents to use to keep track of student grades, and it's also a way to communicate with teachers via email. Um, it's very simple to create an account. If you don't already have an account, you just need to make sure that you have an email address on file with the school. And the first time that you go on to Home Access Center, Home Access Center you would go to the Midland Public School website click on the parents tab or the students tab depending on which one applies to you and look for the home access center link that you can click on you'll type in your username which will be your email address that you have on file and then for the first time that you register you can click on the button that says I would like to register and you create your password 
Once you get on there, it is very simple to navigate and you can keep track of your students' grades, find out how they're doing in each class, see if they're missing any assignments, and then there's also a link where you can click on to email the teacher and communicate with them if you have any questions. So this is, a, this is a great way to keep up to date with your students' grades and not have to wait until the end of the marking period. Uh, speaking of the end of the marking period, it's not happening during the month of October, but the week of November, the first week of November, November 7th, will be the end of the first marking period. And that is when final grades will come out. But you can, can monitor the progress throughout that time frame on Home Access Center. And I would also like to let you know that parent-teacher conferences will be happening at the high school on October 14th in the evening from 5 to 8 p.m. So this is your chance to come in and meet with the teacher, sit down for a few minutes, and speak with them one-on-one -on -one about the progress that your student is having in school. So that will wrap up the October edition of Counselor's Corner. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time. For 70 years, Smokey Bear has asked you to use fire responsibly. Fire is due to an unattended campfire. Go time. Here's how you can stay on the front lines of preventing wildfires. Always watch your campfire before leaving. Drown it, stir it, drown it again, and feel that the fire is out cold. Oh. Bullseye! And you won't need a visit from these guys. Copy that. You can be Smokey's wingman when enjoying nature and prevent wildfires. Visit SmokeyBear.com for more fire prevention tips. Welcome back to MPS Today. Joining us now in the studio are guests from the Midland High School Amateur Radio Club. We have club advisor, Dr. Dennis Klippa, and recent graduate, Jordan Schreier. Uh, Dr. Klippa and Jordan, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. You bet. Now tell us a little bit about yourselves. Uh, Dr. Klippa, what do you do and, and how did you come to be involved in the club? I'm a retired research chemist. I worked at Dow Chemical. I have a okay. PhD in organic chemistry. And uh, I've been a ham radio operator or amateur radio operator since I was 15 years old. So I've been in this a long time. Sure. And uh, we had a club, radio club, at Central Middle School. And Central Middle School decided to close. And so we decided, okay, we're going to go to another middle school or we're going to go to the high school. So we decided we would go to the high school level where the students would have more science, more math, and could be more involved in amateur radio. Okay. So we approached the high school student, the high school principal, and uh, we were very well received, so uh, we started a club last year. That's great. Now, if I remember correctly, we almost caused an international incident with the, uh, with the radio club before. Isn't that right? Well, there was an, we helped out the, uh, the all-girls Raspberry Pi club with their balloon launch, and we provided the tracking capability so they uh, could follow their balloon. And they were doing a weather balloon. They were doing right? a weather yeah, balloon. Okay. And uh, it landed in... Canada, in Toronto, yeah. about 200 yards from the Lake Erie. So fortunately, the hams over there were very cooperative and retrieved the package for us and returned it to us. Yeah, that's what we heard. They actually got it back, right. and it was, a, it was an exciting adventure. Very exciting. All right, good. Well, thank you very much for helping out with the club. It's a great thing. Now, Jordan, uh, you're a recent graduate from Midland High School. Is that right? Oh, yes, yeah. Oh, well, congratulations. Oh, thank you. And what are you up to now? Uh, well, I was originally going to go into cosmetology in Zimbabwe. Yeah. Okay. Um, but that really didn't work out. Um, so now I'm going to uh, information, security, and intelligence, starting at Delta, maybe go to Ferris, you know. Okay. Yeah. Good. And how, how, is, uh, how are your classes started off? Are you pretty well? Uh, so far, pretty good, yeah. It's just like high school, but a little bit easier. Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. we hear that a lot from folks coming from our high schools. It's, uh, so you feel like you're well prepared then? Oh, yeah, most definitely. Good. Now tell us more about the Amateur Radio Club. What do you do? Well, we learn about amateur radio, first of all. I mean, that's pretty given uh, and you also like you can we also learn about electronics that go into the radios and we also learn about like the different uh, different styles of like radio like how to like uh, you know do radio itself okay um, and yeah so your who was your first contact where it was where did you contact first when you uh, got on the radio you know, I really, I really can't remember. Japan, remember oh, yeah, you were the, yeah, the Japan. that was your yeah, first yeah. contact. You know, many of us work for years to try to make a contact with Japan. His first contact on the radio was Japan. Wow. It just wasn't fair. It was, it was, 
beginner's luck, I guess. So you, when you're, tell us how you do that. So. Oh well, we have this like radio set up, you know, you with the, like a microphone, of course, and like a mm -hmm. little radio, and like we could try to position the antenna first, like to the uh, direction of where Japan would like normally send like waves. So you would aim the, you aim your antenna basically at right. where you want to try to connect with. Yep. And you're hoping that somebody's back there listening. Yeah. Is that the and basic you, idea? Yeah. You kind of listen to the bands and you try to listen for like voices usually, and you just kind of listen and try to hear a voice and you try to. Um, like chime in at, at a certain time. There's like a certain uh, time that you should um, properly, I guess. Okay. And then you give out your little call sign, and then um, and then they'll re return your call sign, and then you kind of start a chat, and uh, it turns out pretty good. You know, in this case, it was just like more of just a contact. You know, um, to uh, what do they call those? QSO. Yeah, Q QSO, which is just basically a basic contact, you know, just kind of exchange like uh, some small talk, but then uh, it was nice talking to you, and nice for thanks for the contact, and then, sure. yeah. That's now, they were an English speaker, or you speak Japanese, or a little bit of both, or how did that work out for I you? I wish I spoke Japanese, but that wasn't the case. Um, it, he spoke uh, English. I think he, was, he, he spoke a little bit, just enough to do radio, so. Okay, great. Well, that sounds exciting. Now, is that you, know, you said that can be hard to make contacts in different places. Well, you never know. The, the propagation of the radio signals depends a lot on the ionosphere and the sunspot sure. cycle and time of day. So the, the ability to work Japan, you can't do that every day. It's highly variable. It's so highly everything variable. Everything has to be just so right. There's a little it? bit of chance in, yeah. in, in that. So, yeah. That must be part of what makes it interesting. Yeah, because you, you, it's like fishing. You throw your line in the water, and you never know who's going to come back. Sure. But they're always interesting. Well, so tell us about that. Tell us about some students that uh, I we hear about Jordan talking with folks in Japan. What other kind of things have happened with the club? Well, uh, there's basically three main parts to amateur radio. One is talking on the radio and making friends around the world. We're kind of ambassadors to the rest of the world. Um, there's also learning about electronics. Uh, it's a critical part of amateur radio. Sure. Um, we're allowed to make our own transmitters and receivers, and, and so we need to learn about Amateur for electronics all the way from DC to daylight, we say. So there's a little bit of engineering going on. There's a little bit of engineering, mm -hmm. so exploring physics and science, and, and that's a lot of fun. And the third part of that is uh, public service. We provide public service communications locally and nationally and internationally. Whenever there's things like a hurricane, uh, the normal infrastructure will be destroyed, and amateur radios are usually mm -hmm. the first ones that have communications up and running. Um, when the uh, earthquakes happened in the, uh, the Caribbean, uh -huh. um, the amateur radio operators were the first ones to get messages in and out. When 9-11 happened, all the cell phone systems went down. It was the amateur radios that were there ready to go providing that communication. And that sure. happens over and over again. We also provide communications for local events like the Dow Run and the, the Dirty Dog Run. Uh, it's basically health and welfare. We're stationed throughout the course. Yeah. If something happens, we're there to be able to report you know, safety and health issues. That's great. What, a, what an interesting and worthwhile endeavor then. That yeah. sounds great. Now, how many students were involved in the club during uh, last school year? Uh, it, it varied because of other commitments between 12 and 18 students. Sure. We know a lot of our students are busy, like you were talking about with band, and then folks have sports and other activities, academic right. studies as well. So 12 to 18 students, and they're all Midland High School students or students from elsewhere as uh, well? The club is set up so that uh, any high school student in Midland County is uh, welcome. We'd love to have them. Uh, we had a couple of students from one of the other high schools uh, okay. last year sure. and uh, would love to have more. So that's important for folks to know. So even right. if uh, they're not a Midland High School student, they could still choose to be involved. Right. What would be the best way for them to get a hold of somebody to find out about meeting times and opportunities? Uh, they could get a hold of uh, myself. Okay. And uh, we can provide a, a uh, phone number if you like. Yeah, we'll have Billy put that on the screen right now, but why don't you just go ahead and tell us. Okay, the phone number is 989-948-5427. Okay. Or they can contact Mr. Fawcett at Midland High School. He's the physics teacher there. Great. And all our radio equipment and everything is set up right in his physics room. What are your goals for the club this year? What are you anticipating happening this year? Well, our, our, our goal is always to introduce the students to amateur radio and electronics yeah. and give them an opportunity to learn and be prepared for college and for their careers. There's three projects that we want to work on this year. A number of our students are, inter are interested in computers. So we've put together a project where they will build a computer from scratch. Now, it's going to be a pretty simple computer, mm -hmm. but it'll have all the major functions to it. 
We also want to start doing some satellite communications. We've developed a relationship with Professor Cutler at the University of Michigan, who does a lot of satellite work. And uh, we're going to coordinate with him and begin to get our students involved in satellite communications. And we also want to pick up on what the Raspberry Pi, All Girls Raspberry Pi Club started doing with their balloon launches. And we want to be able to do remote data sensing, measuring things up in the upper atmosphere, temperature, okay. um, radiation, that kind of stuff, and then use amateur radio to communicate that information back to us, but also track the balloon so we can recover the paper. Sure. That's amazing. You know, it, we spend a lot of time talking about what we call STEM initiatives, you know, so science, technology, engineering, and math. And we can certainly integrate that into the school day, and we do. But this is, seems like a really uh, nice conflict, a, a nice in, integration of STEM ideas and something that's really fun, too, yeah. and, uh, and engaging. Right. And, and, and a real-world application, if you will. Another th fun thing that we do is fox hunts. Okay. And a fox is a hidden transmitter. So we'll wow. take the hidden transmitter and locate that someplace on school grounds or out in the city someplace. And then the students have built direction finding equipment and we use that to then go ahead and try to find the fox. And we divide up into teams sure. and make a little competition out of That's it. That's awesome. Jordan, as you move forward uh, to Delta College and, and uh, information systems and security and everything else that you're doing, what's your, your favorite thing that you remember from uh, the radio club? Oh, the, uh, the most favorite thing, I mean, again, the people are just so nice, too. Um, but also, like, learning the, all the things, like, I wouldn't normally uh, get to learn in a normal classroom setting. So this is kind of like a, like a cool little thing that I can, uh, you know, learn about, like, different, um, like, radios and, like, more, more of how electronics work and how I can, like, implement, uh, implement those in, uh, into bigger and better things. Sure. So you're able to apply what you were learning in class in yeah. a... In a, in a day-to-day -day real, world, real world application so that's awesome oh yeah anything great. anything else would be uh, just arbitrary so that's good great well uh, Dr. Klippa and Jordan thanks so much for coming to talk with us about the Midland High Amateur Radio Club we appreciate it thank you very much yeah thank you thank you well that's our show for today uh, thanks for joining us and remember that you can view the show on our YouTube site www.midlandps.org and click on the YouTube link. Uh, we're also on TV uh, on Charter Cable Channel 190 and on UVerse Channel 99. So that's it for today and join us next time on MPS Today.